Living things are different from non-living things in many ways. We can identify six of the most important life processes found in the human body that are not found in non-living things. These processes are metabolism, responsiveness, movement, growth, differentiation, and reproduction. Metabolism refers to all of the chemical reactions that occur in the body. Metabolic reactions are diverse, but they can be grouped into two major categories, anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism describes chemical reactions that build up larger complex chemicals from smaller, simpler chemical building blocks. Examples of anabolism include the synthesis of new complex carbohydrates or proteins. These reactions are also called anabolic reactions. You may have heard this word used before in reference to anabolic steroids, which are hormones that increase protein synthesis and muscle growth. Catabolism is the opposite of anabolism. Catabolic reactions break down large, complex chemicals into small, simple chemical building blocks. You can remember this word from its prefix, kata, which is found in words you may know, such as cataclysm and catastrophic, which refer to destruction. Kata means down, as in breaking something down. All of the digestive reactions that take place along the GI tract that break down complex carbohydrates into simple sugars and proteins into amino acids are examples of catabolic reactions. Responsiveness, the second life process, is the ability of the body to detect and react to changes in its external or internal environment. Any change in either environment is called a stimulus. The body is adapted to respond to many different types of stimuli. Examples of some stimuli include visual, auditory, or sounds, olfactory, or smells, chemical, touch, pressure, and temperature. Many of the body cells are adapted to respond to specific types of stimuli. For example, skeletal muscle cells respond by contracting and shortening their length, which pulls and moves the bone they are attached to. Neurons respond by producing nerve impulses called action potentials, which are fast-moving electrical signals that allow neurons to communicate with each other or other excitatory cells. The third life process is movement, which is the motion of the entire body or any of its parts, such as organs, cells, and internal cellular structures called organelles. The walls of many organs contain layers of smooth muscle, which can contract to propel substances through the organ. White blood cells can move out of the bloodstream and into the surrounding tissues where an infection is occurring. Inside the cell, secretory vesicles can move to the cell's plasma membrane in order to release their chemical products. The fourth life process is growth, which results from an increase in the body's overall size due to the enlargement of body cells and or an increase in the number of cells through cell division. Growth can also occur through the accumulation of materials outside of a cell. For example, the mineral-rich matrix that builds up between bone cells allows the bone to grow longer and wider. The fifth life process is differentiation, which is where a cell becomes increasingly specialized as it matures and takes on a specific, different shape, structure, and function. Cells begin their lives as stem cells, which are precursor or ancestor cells that have a general, undifferentiated state and the ability to actively divide. When we study blood later in the course, we'll learn about the cell differentiation that takes place in the red bone marrow, which leads to the development of all of the diverse types of blood cells, including the red blood cells, 
that lose their nucleus during their differentiation process. The sixth and final life process is reproduction, which is the formation of new cells through cell division that occurs during tissue growth, replacement, or repair. It can also refer to the formation of a new individual human being as a result of fertilization between a sperm and an egg cell. If any of these life processes stops occurring, the result is cell and tissue death, which can lead to the overall death of the individual. 